In this video, I'm gonna be talking about split squats. All the different variations of it that I like to fuck with and why you should be doing split squats. Let's get straight into it. All right, so first and foremost, the most obvious variation that 90% of the people in the gym are gonna be doing, Bulgarian split squats. And I know these fucking get a bad rap because they're fucking difficult, but this is such a good exercise. And one of the reasons I love this exercise is because from a programming standpoint, it's fucking beautiful, okay? If you're doing a lot of back squats, or you're doing a lot of axial loaded movements, like, uh, you know, back squats, uh, deadlifts, shit like that, your lower back is gonna be fucking taking a hit. And your lower back is like a precious resource. You gotta baby that, no, you don't have to baby it, but you gotta take care of your lower back. So you gotta be conscious of that stuff. And split squats, specifically Bulgarian split squats, have minimal or no axial loading depending on the variation you do. Most people just do it with dumbbells. That's no axial loading. So from a programming standpoint, these are fucking phenomenal. Also, even though they are a unilateral exercise, the bilateral strength deficit is minimal, if anything. Um, so that's gonna make it a better movement for hypertrophy because you can move more weight and you're more stable. Like. Realistically, if you've been doing Bulgarians for like a couple months, you should have no fucking problem stabilizing it, unless you're like an obese or overweight person or you're just like a fucking pansy. You should have no problem. But like if you're a, a fucking healthy young man, which you know I assume most of the people watching this channel are, then really you shouldn't have a fucking problem coordinating yourself. And <clears throat> like compared to other unilateral movements, so like let's say a single leg leg press in the single leg leg press you know you might only be able to do like two plates on each side of the leg press but when you throw fucking um two legs on you would do like fucking eight plates okay so there's a big bilateral fucking strength deficit there bilateral i'm sorry to use all this fucking fancy terminology all that means is when you go from both sides to one side how much strength do you lose so you know, if you consider like me, right? I squat like, you know, 315 maybe for like five. Let's just be, you know, modest. 315 for a set of five. I could probably do like, I do 70s, you know, pretty routinely for sets of 10 on the Bulgarians. So 70s, that's 140 total, right? Because it's 70 in each hand. So if you multiply that by two, as if I had two legs, that's 280. And 280 for a set of 10 on squats is, you know, that's pretty good for me. That's right about where I am. So get, you, get, you get what I'm saying. Like there's not much of a, of a strength deficit. So this movement is gonna be really good for hypertrophy. Um, on top of that, it's gonna be really good for those of you who have knee problems. Um, specifically because there's a couple different ways to, um, Maneuver it, right? With the back squat, your knees are coming pretty far forward. With the split squat, you can allow yourself to sit back a little bit more because now you have that back leg supporting you. So you could sit back a little bit more, get more hip flexion, and get more glute activation than a normal squat. That'd be another benefit, more glute activation. Um, so it's gonna be better for those of you with knee pain because you can kind of avoid that um, stressful knee flexion not saying that's a long-term solution. It's more of a let's work around it now type shit. And I'll talk about a little bit more about some solutions later on in this video. But yeah, you could sit back a little bit more. You could get more glute activation. Um, you're also gonna get more glute medius activation. So that's that fucking like, um, it's one of your hip abductors. And it's the muscle on the side of your hip basically that abducts your hip. So a lot of people just get really fucking weak in this area, you know, from sitting all day and shit. And this muscle is very important, not only for stability, but also because let's say the, the, the people that I really see it important for are runners. Because if, if you're a runner and you don't have um, strength in your glute medius, your IT band is gonna take over. Or any sport where you're running a lot. You know, your IT band is gonna take over, you're gonna get fucking knee problems, and all sorts of shit. You don't want that shit. So this is an easy way 
to increase glute medius activation. Because if you think about it, <clears throat> you have some lateral instability in the split squat. So that's gonna challenge your glute medius a little bit more. It's also gonna uh, challenge your abs a little bit more than a normal squat would, specifically your obliques, your QL, and your transverse abdominis. Once again, fancy terms, it all fucking helps with the stability of your core if you don't know what any of those muscles are. Um, let's see, hip flexor stretch. You're gonna get a pretty fucking decent hip flexor stress when you're doing Bulgarians. Um, especially if you focus on keeping that back leg like dead and just relaxing the shit out of it, you will get a hip flexor stretch. And you probably never noticed that before because most people are way too tense in that back leg and might even be using it a little bit to help them lift up. So yeah, you get a little bit of a decent hip flexor stretch, which is also gonna help with those of you who are athletes, those of you who are runners, because if your hip flexors get tight, then that could create fucking knee issues, back issues, and shit like that. So hip flexor stretch. But if you want an even better hip flexor stretch, there's a better variation of a split squat. That variation is going to be the ATG split squat. And you saw me doing a lot of these. If you go back to my old videos, I did a lot of these when I had back pain. Um, and these definitely fucking help the shit out of my back pain because you're getting a crazy hip flexor stretch. Um, I'll try and pull up some clips of this. I can't guarantee that I still have them, but you're basically lunging all the way forward to where your knee comes all the way forward as far as you could fucking get it. So a lot of people aren't even gonna be able to do this on flat ground at first. A lot of people are gonna have to do it elevated at first and then work their way down and then gradually add weight as well. So this exercise, number one, you're gonna have your knee going all the way over your toes. So for those of you who have knee pain, this is gonna be what you want to do to help relieve your knee pain. Now, I'm not, I'm not a fucking medical professional, but I am saying give it a try, especially like the average person. Like if you have like some one-off knee injury, then yeah. But like if you have tendonitis and you're not, you're, you're not uh, normally going into deep squats, then you definitely need to be doing ATG split squats because you're getting your knee all the way over your toes. What that's doing is it's strengthening your knee tendon. It's strengthening your knee tendon um, and pumping synovial fluid into your joint. So that's gonna help for those of you who have knee pain. And that's why I say, if you have knee pain, you can use the Bulgarian as a hypertrophy exercise and the ATG split squat as rehab and use the both of them together in fucking perfect synergy okay it's also gonna be good for those of you who have back pain like i said because you get that that crazy hip flexor stretch one hip is in deep flexion so one hip is in deep flexion the other hip is in deep extension and why is that really good well it's really good because we don't really ever train any movements where one hip is in flexion and one hip is in, is in extension. We don't train any movements like that in the gym, but we end up in that position all the time in everyday life and in sports. Because think about when you're running, right? One hip is in, in flexion, the other one is in extension. So with the ATG split squat, we're taking that to the extreme and we're working those end ranges. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna bulletproof your fucking body. So, you know, when I was doing these, I felt amazing. And honestly, I need to start uh, bringing these back into my program. So this is not really as much as a, a, a hypertrophy movement as, as the Bulgarian is. Um, so I would say, yeah, if for hypertrophy, the Bulgarian is definitely better, but each serves its place. So the Bulgarian is better for power output and hypertrophy and the ATG split squat is better for power expression and mobility. Mobility, obviously, and power expression, what that means is your ability to express that fucking strength, right? So if we're thinking about sports, you could have, you know, you could be a basketball player and you could have the strongest fucking hips ever. You could have a fucking massive fat old ass. And you, you could have that, right? And maybe you were able to jump out the fucking gym, but then you got injured 
or your shit timed up, right? If you got these massive fucking glutes, but you can't use them because you can't get your hip into um, a high degree of hip extension, then you're not gonna be able to use that in a fucking sports or, you know, in like some, yeah, in some athletic standpoint. So if you're an athlete, I would honestly recommend doing both of these. Just understand the purposes of each. If you're just an average gym goer like myself, um, you could still make use of both. Obviously, Bulgarian for hypertrophy, ATG for mobility. Another variation to the Bulgarian split squat would be a deficit Bulgarian split squat. So you're basically just putting a box underneath your front leg to allow yourself to get a, a larger range of motion. That way, your knee is not hitting the ground this soon. So basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow you to get a better glute stretch and actually you're actually gonna be able to fucking get a, um, a little bit of a better hip flexor stretch in the back leg as well. Um, so don't get this confused with the ATG split squat just because you're elevating your front leg. Typically in the deficit Bulgarian, you're gonna be sitting back a little bit more. With the ATG, your, your knee is all the way lean the fuck forward. With this, it's still a Bulgarian you're just getting a little bit more hip flexion, a little bit more defle uh, knee flexion, and a little bit better stretch. So in my opinion, I just started putting these into my routine. In my opinion, obviously this is gonna be the hardest variation. Well, actually not really, ATG is probably harder, but this is gonna be the best for hypertrophy because you're really uh, hitting the targeted muscles but through the largest range of motion. We all know that larger range of motion movements are gonna be better for hypertrophy. If we could train the muscle in that lengthened position and get the, and get the fucking weighted stretch, that is gonna blow your fucking ass up, blow your quads up, you know? So I definitely recommend doing these if you've never done them. All right, a fourth variation of the, of the split squat that's gonna also uh, be really good for hypertrophy is a barbell loaded Bulgarian. So usually you're doing Bulgarians with the um, dumbbells, you know, maybe one dumbbell, maybe two dumbbells. So there's a lot of different ways to maneuver this, but another way would be with a barbell on your back, right? And what that's gonna do is it's gonna take some of the core out of it, making it more stable, and therefore it's gonna allow you to hit your legs a little bit better because now you're not as focused on you know stability and balancing you know like i said it really shouldn't be that big of an issue the core stability part and the balance part if you're like a fucking healthy young man but even then there's still a little bit of lateral and rotational instability in the split squat adding that barbell is going to take a lot of that out because when you're using the dumbbells what they're doing you know especially as you're getting into the groove of reps they're like fucking you know they're like swinging and shit you know you're doing all that shit. So that's gonna take away from your stability and that's gonna take away from the, you know, the focus on the legs and bring the focus to the core. With the bar on your back, you don't need the core activation, so you're gonna hit your legs a little bit better. But the thing about that is now you are taking away one of the, you know, you're taking away to a certain extent one of the main benefits of doing the fucking split squat in the first place, and that is the reduced axial loading. So like I said, if you're doing a lot of squats and you need something to pair alongside that, you don't wanna fucking do like a, a, like a fucking, um, I don't know, you don't necessarily wanna do like a, a fucking Smith machine squat as a fucking accessory to your back squat. You know, you wanna do something that's gonna relieve the pressure on your lower back. So you do Bulgarians, but if you're using the bar on your back, obviously you're gonna take some of that benefit away. Now, 160 pounds on your back in a Bulgarian is not the same thing. Uh, it's not as stressful as 320 in a fucking back squat, okay? So keep in mind, it's not taking away all the benefit, but it is taking away a little bit. There, you, you know, we gotta pay some consideration to that 160 pounds. Um, another thing about this, um, also higher loading potential. You could go heavier on these because you don't have to worry about the lateral stability. Also, another way to do this, instead of just doing it with a free weighted barbell, would be to do it on a Smith machine with the bar on your back, okay? 
that's decent because then it's really fucking stable. So now all you're really thinking about is using your legs. The core uh, stability part is pretty much non-existent. But I don't really like that variation. And the reason for that is it's just kind of unnatural. You know, you're locked into place. And for me, as somebody who's had a lot of lower back issues, that is gonna fucking flare up my lower back. Because naturally, when you go into a split squat, you have the tendency to arch your back a little bit. You know, obviously you wanna think about bracing your core, but you're not gonna eliminate all that arching. And with the, with the Smith machine bar on your back, you are gonna fucking be arching the shit out of your lower back. And there, now there's gonna be axial loading coming down on your lower back even worse than just with the standard barbell. So, uh, I, you know, personally, not a huge fan of that exercise, but I know some of you guys like it. Uh, you know, I see fucking the women doing it in the gym all the time, and it kind of just blows me because it, it doesn't feel good to me. A way around that uh, Smith machine problem, though, is instead of putting the Smith machine on your back, you do what's called a bazooka Bulgarian split squat. Yes, I know, sounds funny, sounds goofy as fuck, but what you do is you basically get into a split, uh, sp la, 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 split squat, right? And pretty much what you do is you load it on your shoulder. So now you're taking away some of the axial loading. It, well, not really. You're still getting axial loading, right? But now that force from the Smith machine is coming straight down through the joint that is working. So right, if we're working our left leg in the Bulgarian, we're gonna have it on our left shoulder. So now the weight is coming straight down, straight over our left hip and left knee, and that's gonna take a lot of pressure off the lower back. It's gonna reduce the tendency for your lower back to hyperextend, and it's gonna feel a lot better on your lower back. Um, and then you're also going to be in a better shoulder position because now we don't have to worry about, um, any extra stress to our rotator cuffs. You know, when you're doing back squats, believe it or not, you're getting a lot of fucking stress to your rotator cuffs and same thing, anything where you're holding the bar back here, stressing the shit out of your shoulders. When you have it here, now you're going to eliminate a lot of that shoulder stress. You're going to eliminate the lower back stress and honestly, I haven't even fucking done this one. I just saw it on Instagram, but it seems like a pretty fucking cool idea to me. Um, so that is pretty much all the um, split squat variations I can think of right now. I know there's some out there, just like the normal fucking split squat where you're just on flat ground. But, you know, personally, not a fan. Um, and I know there's some more out there, but these are the main ones I think, you know, a lot of you guys might be doing. And yeah, I hope this video helps. If it did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the fucking channel. Um, I'm gonna be posting a lot more videos like these. So if you watched it all the way, uh, leave a comment what you wanna see in the next video. Leave a comment with a question you have or any shit like that.